It's hard to believe that it's already been eight months since we finished building this truck and had the camper put on the back. And we've spent approximately 60 nights in it. In today's video, I really wanna go over our experiences that we've had with it. What we love, what we don't like, things that we've learned. And then I also wanna go over things that we would do different if we started from zero again. So let's talk about what we like. One of the things that we absolutely love and that drew us to this, it's given us the ability to kind of take an artistic approach with camping. We now have the ability to either camp in an RV spot at a regular RV campground, like a KOA or something of that nature, or we can camp completely wild and 100% off grid for an extended amount of time. Whereas before we kind of stayed within the campground confines or we had hotels and then we'd go out for the day. But this has really evolved the ability of us to be able to camp and get wild and experience things on a whole new level. We're really able to camp as wild as we want to. The next thing that we love is the absolute ease of setting up and tearing down our camper setup. So it takes me literally about 45 seconds to set this thing up from popping the six turnbuckles to pushing the roof up to taking the awning out. And it takes about another two and a half minutes to set up my outdoor cook station, all the chairs and anything else we really need to be set for a long stay. Another one of the things that we really like is the flexibility in showering either indoors or outdoors. The shower serves a great purpose indoors, especially when we're camping in cold conditions, where an outdoor shower isn't quite as comfortable as maybe you would want it to be. Or even a regular campground, it's not always appropriate to shower outside in front of other campers. And I'm not saying we would shower nude or have a shower tent uh, or an enclosure around our shower, but the ability to shower indoors really has given us more flexibility in being able to camp in more places and just it really increases the overall happiness of our entire camping experience and that really brings me to my next thing and that's the indoor toilet let's get real for a minute having a nice quiet place outside of the wind outside of the cold or outside of the heat is very nice and comforting to use the restroom at for us and our toilet situation we have a cassette toilet so it really means that if all four of us are using the toilet for every need for multiple days in a row, we can spend about four days filling the toilet up. And once the toilet's full, it's as simple as popping it out and taking it to either a vault tank or any other sewage disposal place that you could imagine. Pulling the cassette out, uncapping it, pressing the vent button, turning it over and dumping it out. And then once we dump it out, one of the great things that we have with us is the Norwell tray. And on the Norwell tray, we have a 40 liter water tank. I regularly clean the Norwell tank, so it is potable, but we really just use it for hand washing and then refilling the toilet and rinsing it out. So after I dump the toilet out, then I'll come back to the Norwell tray. I'll fill it up with about a half to one gallon of water. I'll put the RV purple Dometic pill into the toilet itself, cap it, shake it back up and put it in place. And then we don't have any sewage smell within the camper itself. Next up on the list is the actual off-road worthiness of this truck. Initially when the camper got put on the truck, I was very concerned. I had actually thought that it was a terrible idea of what we did and I started making phone calls frantically trying to figure out something that we could do. But once we got the rear air shocks put on and then once we finally had fine tuned them to how we drive and the situations that we encounter, we found that everything that we put the truck through so far, it has excelled in. The Tundra Crew Max truck is more than capable of handling a four wheel camper on it. But in our situation, it took a little bit of time to get that figured out. So now I wouldn't even hesitate telling somebody it's okay to build a four wheel camper Crew Max Tundra. One of the next things that we really come to enjoy about the camper and the truck setup, we have the ability to cook either inside or outside. On hot summer nights, I'll go ahead and cook outside. But if it's freezing outside and there's high winds or something else, I can easily cook inside. It's really given us the option to make this a four season camper. Let's talk about what we love with the tray so far. We love that it has a 40 liter water tank. We love that it has a slide out drawer in the back that I can keep all of my outdoor cooking supplies in and I love all the storage boxes around the tray. The last thing that I really love about the tray is the pure versatility of the entire thing as a whole. When I take the camper off, 
it really provides me a large space to carry different things that I use for work or whatever it may be. It gives me more usability from the truck bed that I used to have to the tray that I have now. The one thing that I should also mention is that Norwald stands behind their product and we've used their customer service several times to mitigate a fuel filler issue that we had, which I talked about in the truck build video. And without hesitation, they were able to fix the issue with the new parts that they sent us. And it was really easy. And the same thing should be said about four wheel camper. After the initial shakedown of the truck, things were rattling loose. We made a list and we brought it to four wheel camper's attention and they happily got us in as soon as possible and they fixed everything on our punch list. All right, so we've talked about the stuff that we love and that we like about the camper and the setup and the build. Now, let's talk about the things that we don't like. The first thing that we don't really like is the way the shower pan works with the shower curtain. If you were to spray water directly into the shower curtain, you're gonna see a fine mist behind the shower curtain and then the curtain will start sweating. And we've noticed that the curtain doesn't quite tuck into the shower pan so it's tucked in and then it kind of folds over on the bottom no matter how tight you get the curtain tucked in it still wants to fold a little bit on the bottom and so water gets trapped in the fold and then it leaks out and once it leaks out it can go into your cabinets so what we've learned to do is to put a towel around the shower curtain to absorb any of the water that does escape so it doesn't go into our cabinetry and this is something that i did bring up to four wheel camper and I'm pleased to say that they're in the process of working on a new shower pan so nobody else is gonna to have to face this issue in the future. The next thing that I don't really like, and this one is more of me just being OCD. We ordered a black camper and I really wanted black everything else, but there's shiny bright aluminum and there's chrome on stuff. And then there's also this big white door where you take the cassette out from underneath the toilet. And so it would have been really nice to have everything blacked out. And if that was an option at the time, I would have definitely got everything blacked out because seeing bright, shiny aluminum just isn't my style. <laughs> Sorry about the rain again. The next thing up on the list is the dust intrusion. And it seems to only happen when we're on very dusty or fine, silty roads. So we understand dust will come in if the doors open or the vents are open, which is totally fine. But when we're driving down the road, we've also noticed that dust gets in through the nooks and crannies. And then when we're on fine silty dust roads, we'll have a layer of silt dust on top of our living space inside of the four wheel camper, which we would prefer not to have. And if we would have been able to purchase a positive pressure system from the factory, we would have. One of the last things that I don't really like about the build are the rear fender flares. So, I didn't know this initially, but Norweld makes two fender flares. One is a two-piece fender flare system and the other is a one-piece fender flare system. And their one-piece fender flare system is made for extra large, extra wide tires. We run a 37 by 12 and a half on a 17 inch wheel. And we have the two-piece system. We have about an inch and a half of tire that sticks out beyond the tray itself because on the two-piece system, the fender flare doesn't cover the top section of the tray, whereas their one piece fender flare covers from well to well and up above. And if that's something that we would have known about prior to, we would have ordered that with our tray. So those were the things that we don't really like about the build. But enough about that, let's jump into what we've learned. So first off, we've learned that it's really important to cook outside as much as possible. Not only do we conserve our propane, but then we can reduce the climate impact within the camper, which is pretty dramatic when you're thinking about cooking inside on a hot summer night. Well, the next thing that we learned, we didn't quite learn it until we started cold weather camping. So we really wanted to make this a four season camper and we thought it was really important to be able to camp all four seasons effectively and comfortably. A few of the first times when we went out cold weather camping, I noticed there was a draft coming in from somewhere. And so when we came back home and it was cold enough outside, I went ahead and opened one vent and I had the air blowing out with everything else sealed up, and I felt around for any draft possible. I found there was air leaking in around the refrigerator. What I did was I added more weather stripping around the refrigerator and sealed up all the holes that I could feel. And once we did that, we noticed that the cold air didn't seep in like it used to. And on top of that, we also added Reflectix to the windows. We added it directly against the window pane itself, and then we also put a second layer on top over the entire window itself 
which has given us two layers of insulation over the windows. And that was another big issue when we were cold weather camping, is that you would feel the radiant cold coming in through the window more so than anywhere else. After sealing the drafts and after reflectixing the windows and the door, we noticed that we're using about 35% less propane to cold weather camp. Another thing about cold weather camping that we kind of learned the hard way, we found that when it's colder than 36 degrees outside and doesn't get above that, we need to leave the heater on all day long. And not only that, we need to leave the water cabinet open so the warm air can circulate by the water pump. And we found this out because one day we went out hiking to some hot springs and when we came back to make lunch, we turned on the water and we heard some crunching and stuff from the water cabinet. So when I looked in there, I saw that there were ice crystals inside of the water pump, which I then ran hot water through. And it seemed to take care of everything. Ever since leaving the cabinet door open and leaving the heater on the bare minimum, we've noticed that the water doesn't freeze up anymore inside of the pump. And real quick, I wanna talk about the things that we will be adding because there's a few things that were left out of the camper and that we weren't aware of that we needed initially that you might need in your camper. So the first is a pure sine wave power inverter. We are looking to add a 600 to 1000 watt pure sine wave power inverter so we can really work on the road a lot easier. Since we reflectex the windows, I now want to put reflectex inside of the water cabinet itself and see if I can insulate that better. That way we don't have to continually run the propane throughout the day when it reaches sub-freezing temperatures. The next thing I'd really like to do is increase our fuel capacity. Currently, in a combined scenario, we get about 10 and a half miles per gallon with the truck and the camper. And we knew we wouldn't get great mileage going down the road with everything on the truck, although we would like our fuel capacity to be increased by about 10 or 15 gallons. Here are the things that we would do different if we started from scratch again. First off, inside the camper itself, I would go ahead with the lithium battery and the whole power management to use lithium batteries and have a power inverter already in here. That's just an option that we would prefer to go with if we could do it again. The next thing that I would do differently is actually wrap the camper in vinyl. Matter of fact, I'd wrap the whole truck in vinyl and I'd wrap the camper in vinyl. Vinyl doesn't seem to scratch like paint does. It wasn't but our second or third time out and we had to squeeze the camper through some tight spaces. Unfortunately, the camper got a little bit scratched. And ever since then, it's gotten more scratched. A way to prevent the scratches from happening would be to put clear vinyl on the outside. And from my experience, the vinyl isn't terribly difficult to keep clean. The next thing that I would do differently is I would get the six step stairs. So we had initially purchased the six step stairs from four wheel camper. And we had calculated our height. And then when we got the six steps on, it was too much. So we switched back down to the five steps. But now that we've got our new tires on, and the rest of our suspension on, we need one more step. So if I could do it all over again, I would definitely get the six step stairs. I really don't think there's a perfect build out there, but we really feel that what we've built here and what we've progressed it into is really as close to perfect as we can get. We're extremely happy with how things have turned out. We're so happy with the capability of the truck and the mobility and flexibility of the camper and the tray itself and not to mention the rest of the parts on the truck that make living on the road fun and easy. I really hope you've enjoyed our six month 60 night review. I'll let you guys later.